Welcome back. Your pediatric endocrinologist has prescribed a treatment plan to manage your child's diabetes. This treatment plan is comprised of three main steps, blood sugar monitoring, insulin injections, and carbohydrate counting. If done properly, the treatment plan will allow for stable blood sugars as well as flexibility for your child's lifestyle. Now, let me introduce Adrian Lemansky, one of our dietitians, who will teach us how carbohydrates work in the body. Carbohydrates are one of the main nutrients that supplies energy for our bodies. Children need carbohydrates for normal growth and development. Once digested, carbohydrates break down into sugar. Carbohydrates will elevate blood sugars if there's not enough insulin in our body to utilize them properly. What foods contain carbohydrates? Starches like bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. Starchy vegetables like corn, peas, and potatoes, and most legumes. Fruit, including 100% fruit juice, although we don't advise drinking juice unless it is to treat a low blood sugar. Milk, including yogurt and ice cream, and sweets like cookies, cake, candies, syrup, honey, and sugar. Once diagnosed with diabetes, we still recommend a healthy, balanced diet that includes carbohydrates, protein, and fats. Please reference the MyPlate image with balanced choices from the various food groups. Dietary recommendations have changed significantly for people with diabetes. In the past, recommendations suggested complete avoidance of sugar. We now know that individuals with diabetes can enjoy a wide variety of food choices from all food groups, including those fun foods that incorporate sugar. It is recommended that all children and adolescents with diabetes consume regular meals and snacks and aim to choose balanced options from all food groups. Sugar-sweetened beverages, including juice, soda, and sport drinks should be avoided unless being utilized to help treat a low blood sugar. Different foods affect blood sugars in different ways. Foods high in carbohydrates will raise blood sugars quicker than others. Therefore, you must keep track of the carbohydrates your child eats. You may be tempted to cut them out of your child's diet altogether. However, carbohydrates are essential and play a very important role in your child's physical health and brain function. Our team will teach you about carb counting, which is a systematic way of counting how many carbohydrates are in your child's meals and snacks. First, let's review how to read a food label, like this carton of yogurt. The information on a food label will help you in selecting balanced foods that will make managing your child's blood sugars easier. Food labels will tell you how many carbohydrates are in each serving, as well as additional information such as how much fat, sugar, and fiber are in each serving. You can then decide if the food fits into your child's meal or snack. The serving size is important because it tells you how much of the food is considered a single serving. The total carbohydrate displays how many carbs are in each serving. When you are carb counting, this number will help you fit the food into your child's meal plan. Please keep in mind the number of servings your child eats. For example, if they eat two servings, you'll need to double the amount of carbohydrates listed on the label. This will help you give your child the correct amount of insulin. Sugar listed on the label, below carbohydrates, includes both natural and added sugars. Sugars count as part of your child's carbohydrate intake and are already included in the total carbohydrate amount on the label. So, you do not need to add the amount of sugar separately when figuring out how much insulin to give your child. Only take into consideration the amount of carbohydrates when preparing insulin. For diabetes meal planning, you would add all of the grams of carbohydrates together or carb counting. For example, a classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich with two slices of bread, peanut butter and jelly, a medium apple, and eight ounces of milk would be 74 grams of carbohydrates. For school lunches and snacks, parents often will label their child's food with the amount of carbohydrates to help with ease of insulin dosing at those times. Please refer to your Managing Diabetes Binder for a list of balanced snacks and low carbohydrate food choices. Having a routine during the day is very helpful. Consistent snacking or grazing between meals makes it difficult to provide adequate coverage of carbohydrates with insulin and also difficult to interpret blood sugar readings. To help with schedules, we encourage at least two hours between meals and snacking. 
Most children need three meals and two to three snacks per day, depending on their age and activity level. We know life is busy with school and activities, so here is an example of a meal schedule. 7.30 a.m. breakfast, 9.30 a.m. morning snack, 15 carbs or less, no insulin needed, 12 noon, lunch, 3 p.m. afternoon snack, 15 carbs or less, no insulin needed, 5.30 p.m. dinner, and 8 p.m. bedtime snack. Thank you, Adrian. The dietitians in the clinic and hospital setting will be meeting with you to review carbohydrate counting, low carb foods, label reading, balanced snacks, exercise, and sick day management. Our goal is to keep your child's schedule and lifestyle flexible and close to what you were doing prior to diagnosis. Please proceed with the next video to continue with diabetes education.